This is the ultimate barrel racing photography setup. If you wanna shoot barrel racing photography the way I've done it in the past, you're gonna to wanna to rig like this. What we've got here is a whole system to keep me comfortable and consistent. Those are the two things that we always wanna have. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room. First and foremost, this huge lens is a 120 to 300 millimeter lens. You'll notice here that I have a 1.4X teleconverter on it. If you want me to do a video about teleconverter versus crop mode, let me know. I'll be glad to do that. This makes this 168 to 420 millimeter lens at f4. It's an f2.8 lens, but you put the 1.4X teleconverter on it, you do lose a stop of light. It makes this into an f4 lens, which is totally fine because you'll notice up here, this is a trigger for my pro photo strobes. This trigger wirelessly controls all of my strobes. So my, so all the flashes fire at the same time. I can control their power. I can do a lot of stuff. I talk about this controller and all the strobes and the setup in my lighting 101 to 301 course. So make sure you go check that out. If you're interested in barrel racing photography lighting, we definitely dive into that. I show you the exact layout of all the lights, all that stuff. This is all backed up by a Canon 1D body. This happens to be the 1DX2. The 1DX3s are out, the R3s are out. So if you're mirrorless, get the R3, but they don't have this lens out at this moment for the R3. So you'd also need an adapter in here. So it's making this package pretty long and it's really heavy. Because it's so heavy, I wanna put this on a gimbal head. So you'll notice here, I've got a gimbal head. This is a carbon fiber enduro gimbal head. It's a very nice gimbal head. It's about 600 bucks. They make $2,000 ones. You can spend $5,000 on one. The $600 one is more than sufficient for what we're doing here. It can go up and down, and most importantly, it can go left and right. And when you let it go, your camera is right there. It stays right where you left it. So if you're shooting barrels, you come here, you come there, and you're able to cover the whole pattern very easily. I basically will point this whole system right down the middle of the pattern so that a little bit to the right is first barrel, a little bit to the left is second barrel, and somewhere in the middle is third barrel. We're able to capture when they go from first to second to third and then running home, we're able to track that motion. We're obviously using back button focus and we're just tracking and we're able to zoom in and out during a run and keep that framing, keep that tracking. Nothing ever falls over. This tripod doesn't fall over. If you were on a monopod or you're handheld, you're risking that camera and lens tipping over while you grab your clipboard and pen and paper and you write this down. During a run, we're shooting, 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 shooting and when that run is over we look at this file name on the back of the camera it'll be a four digit number we take that four digit number we write it on this sheet of paper right here next to the contestants name that just ran I have a Yeti cooler here so it's kind of like a table so I use that and I just write and then I'm back to the next one and ready and I can just let go of this camera that is crucial to let go and have it balanced you can see it's tipped back just slightly so how do we fix that we just bump it forward just a little bit and now it's perfectly level it's too far back like this, it will flop backwards. So that's out of balance backwards. And if it's too far forwards, it's gonna wanna fall forward. I've got a quick little trick to show you how to make it perfectly level super fast. And what we're gonna do is at 90 degree angles. So one this way and one perpendicular to that. So what I'll wanna do here is hit info on the back of my camera until I get this leveling system on the back here. And you can see it is out of level. And make sure that it's good and tight here. It's pretty close. So what we'll do is we'll adjust this leg here up like this. And now it's bouncing off the green. So I know that it's really close to level and I'm just I'm wiggling a little bit while I talk so I know that that's all that's affecting it okay now I've gone this way now what I want to do is go 90 degrees to that and that's this way and I see that we are lock it in place a oh, little bit a little bit too far okay there it's bouncing off the green okay so now I know that if it's level this way and it's level this way that it's perfectly level in between setting up in advance so that it is perfectly level in all directions ensures that I always have level photographs okay now moving down the tripod a little bit we've got the this Joby Gorilla Pod. It's wrapped around here, and you see I've got these little red whips holding that in place. When you wrap around this Gorilla Pod, if you've ever used one before, they're not very good at holding their shape for very long, and I need it to hold its shape indefinitely. So, what I do is I grab these little red whips. I get these from Think Tank. We'll put a link in the description below for these guys and everything else you see here. So, make sure you look out for that. So, that Gorilla Pod is holding onto my phone, and it's right here where it's handy for me to be able to reach it and still be able.
able to type and do the things that I need to do. If I want to communicate with my booth, I communicate over text so that I'm able to map out my thought in between runs and we're not trying to hear over the announcer or the tractor or whatever's going on in the arena. And they don't have to answer immediately. They don't have to take a phone call and stop talking to a customer. They can just check their phone whenever they have a free moment. You might also notice that on this phone holder, it has a cold shoe mount attached to it. So I will often be recording little videos here in between things or going live sometimes, might do stories. Anytime you wanna do some vertical format, you wanna do some TikToks, something like that, you're recording this in between runs, during a drag, whatever, I will attach a little shotgun microphone here and then attach that to my phone so I still get fairly decent audio. And then I'm able to talk to the camera right down here. So it's really nice to be able to record things like that and you know have, have that social media presence still going. Get yourself a nice tripod like this. You wanna be able to have a backrest that's sturdy. There's a low boy chair. I'll put a link to that as well. I love that for the lower angle. It's really nice, but it's a little bit harder to get in and out of. If you are young and healthy and you're doing short events, get that low boy chair. It's a much better angle to get a little bit lower. When we're talking about sitting in this chair, this is a purple cushion. This is from Purple Mattress Company. You gotta get the really thick one. It's like 130 bucks or so. And this is a game changer. I would not be able to shoot for long periods of time in just this regular chair. Having this cushion, it's just a whole new experience. It takes any old junky chair and it makes it into a push dream. Now you want to pull this tripod in like this nice and close. The closer you have it, the less distance that you have to sit up. You don't want to be hunched over your tripod all day down here like this. That's going to kill your back. So with your back up straight, we just look down slightly and then there we are, we're able to shoot. Okay, if you found some value in this video, please like and subscribe. Give me that big old thumbs up and we'd like to see you over there at the courses at equinephotoschool.com.